Hi and welcome in one of the most anticipated videos how to set up Airflow with LDAP. My name is Mark Lomachi, I'm the head of customer training at Astronomer, best selling instructor on Udemy and during the next 10 minutes you are going to discover how to set up your own LDAP, how to configure Airflow with LDAP and last but not least how to authenticate your Airflow users with LDAP. So, at the end of this video, you will have a fully functional development environment where you will be able to play with LDAP and Airflow so that you will truly understand how to do that in your company. The only thing I ask you in favor is to subscribe to my channel. This will help me a lot. And don't forget to smash the like button. This will help me with the YouTube algorithm. So without further ado, let's get started. First thing first, as I strongly believe in learning by doing, you will find the materials of the video in the link in the description below, where you will land on this beautiful page and you will be able to download the materials as shown right there. Once you have downloaded the zip file, unzip it, open your code editor and you should have the same files and folders with config, DAGs, data and so on. In order to set up Airflow with LDAP, obviously you need a LDAP directory. Don't worry, you don't have to do it by yourself. I've already done that for you. This LDAP directory contains information about your users, groups, or basically your organization. LDAP stands for Lightweight Directory Access Protocol, and this protocol allows you to interact with that LDAP directory. And this is what you are going to use in order to authenticate your Airflow users with your LDAP. Actually, let me show you your LDAP directory corresponding to your new organization. Go to your terminal and make sure that you are in the folder airflow underscore LDAP and that you have Docker and Docker Compose installed. Then type docker-compose, up-d, hit enter, and let's wait until Airflow is running as well as the LDAP server. Basically, this command starts the services that you have in your Docker Compose file. If you open it, you can see different services. The first one is Postgres corresponding to the meta database of Airflow the scheduler and the web server of Airflow, as well as the init service. We will come back at it in a few minutes. And two services, open LDAP corresponding to your LDAP directory, as well as PHP LDAP admin, allowing you to interact with your LDAP directory from your web browser. Now, if you are wondering how this LDAP is configured, you can take a look at the environment variables. I won't dive into the details here. Just keep in mind that you have an organization called netflux.com, as shown right there as well as an admin user with the username admin and the password admin. We will use it in the configuration of Airflow. Now that Airflow and the LDAP directory are running, let's go to your web browser. In your web browser, type localhost colon 8081, hit enter and you access to your PHP LDAP admin. From there, click on login. The login is cn equals to admin, comma dc equals to Netflix, and comma dc equals to com. Then for the password, it is admin and click on authenticate. Now you are authenticated. If you click right there, you obtain your users and your groups. Basically, you have three different users, Bob Head, John Wick, and Mark Lamarty. Same for the groups. If you expand them, you can see three groups, admin, data science, and marketing. Each user belongs to one group, Mark Lamberti belongs to the group admin, John Wick belongs to the group marketing, and Bob Head belongs to the group data science. So what is your goal? Well, your goal is to have different roles in your Airflow instance corresponding to the different groups that you have in your LDAP directory. For example, you will have an admin role with a specific set of permissions, same for the data science role and the marketing role. For example, John Wick that belongs to the group marketing in your LDAP directory will belong to the role marketing in your Airflow instance, which means it will have access only to the DAGs of the marketing team. Same for Bob Head. Bob Head belongs to the group data science from your LDAP directory. And so it will have the role data science in your Airflow instance and will access only the DAGs of the data science team. And as McLomarty is the admin, it will have access to everything. So that being said, the first step is to configure Airflow with your LDAP. Let's discover how to do it. First, open the file Docker Compose and you need to change the value of the environment variable user underscore create for the service airflow-init to false. Why? 
because you don't want to create a user automatically when you run Airflow for the first time. Indeed, you want to use the users as defined in your LDAP directory. Once you have done that, save the file and you are ready to move to the second step. In order to indicate that you want to use LDAP to authenticate your users for your Airflow instance, you need to configure your Airflow web server. And to do that, you have to modify a file called webserver underscore config.py. This file is automatically generated by Airflow, but it is based on the Flask app builder or back. So if you want to learn more about it, you need to take a look at the documentation of Flask app builder or back, which is the framework on which is based the Airflow web server. That being said, go to the folder config and open the file webserver underscore config.py. If you take a look at this file, you can see this instruction right there corresponding to the way your users authenticate to your Airflow web server. And right now it is based on auth underscore DB, which means if a user exists in the meta database of Airflow, then that user will be able to connect to your Airflow user interface. But that's not what you want. Now you want to use LDAP so you can remove that instruction and comment that one corresponding to the import of auth underscore LDAP and remove everything after that line. So right there, remove all of those lines. Then save the file. So at this point, you should have only those two instructions. Next, as there is a lot of instructions to put into that file, well, I'm not going to type everything. Otherwise, this video will be really boring. Instead, you can click on the link in the description below where you will land on that beautiful page. Click on configure airflow and basically you just have to copy and paste the different code blocks. But let me give you some explanations about each one. So first, that one is used in order to indicate that you want to authenticate your users using LDAP, then the LDAP server, and the fact that your LDAP doesn't use the TLS protocol. So copy those three lines and paste them in the web server underscore config file, right there. Next, you need to configure the search part. Basically, when someone wants to log into the user interface of Airflow, Airflow will look for that user in your LDAP directory. And you have to indicate from which entry Airflow will look for. In that case, it is the first one, it is the root entry of your LDAP directory, as shown right there. If the user exists in one of the entries that are under DC Netflux DCCom, then Airflow will be able to find that user. Next, you have to indicate the LDAP field corresponding to the username, which is CN. If you go back to your LDAP directory and select John Wick, you can see that for the attribute CN, you have the username. So John Wick will have to log in with that username. Finally, the last two instructions correspond to the user that will be used in order to look for your users. In that case, it is admin as defined in the configuration settings of your LDAP directory. So copy those lines and paste them in the configuration file right there. Save the file and go back to the Notion page. Next, you have to configure the way your users are registered. First, you define that your users can sign into your F instance. Next, you specify the role that will be given in addition to the role that the user has. That means if a user has the role admin, it will get public in addition to the role admin. If a user doesn't belong to any group, to any role, then that user will get public by default. And the role public in Airflow doesn't allow anything. Next, you have given name. Given name is a field from your LDAP directory that will be used as the first name field in your Airflow instance. Same for SN and same for mail. Basically, you will retrieve the information of your users from the user view of your Airflow instance. So copy those lines and paste them in the configuration file just below, right there. Save the file and go back to the Notion page. Next, there is the last part, which is actually maybe the most important one because this is where you define the mapping between the groups that you have in your LDAP directory and the roles that you have in your Airflow instance. For example, you have the group marketing in your LDAP directory and you want to map it with the user role in your F instance. How to do that? Just by specifying that line, you are doing the mapping. And if you are wondering how can you find this path, well, go back to your LDAP directory and select marketing, for example, and you can find the path right there. So use that in order to map your group 
with a rule in your for instance. And by the way, if you are wondering which rule you can use, go to the documentation of Airflow, click on security, access control, and you can find all the default rules of Airflow, admin, public, viewer, and so on, as well as the permissions for each rule. This page is extremely important. Take a look at it. Next, data science is mapped with the user role and admin is mapped with the admin role. Finally, you have three more configuration settings. The first one is group field member of. So actually this field is set in your LDAP directory. If you click on a user, let's say John Wick, and show internal attributes, you can see that member of defines the group that user belongs to. In that case, it is marketing. So this is the field that Airflow will use in order to know which group that user belongs to. You have sync at login, which is extremely useful because whenever a user sign in, well, the walls will be synchronized with your LDAP directory. And you can specify that after 30 minutes of inactivity, that user will have to sign in again, which is pretty useful to keep your walls in sync. So that being said, copy all of those lines, go back to your configuration file and paste them right there. Save the file and you are done with the configuration of Airflow. Now you have Airflow configured with your LDAP and you are ready to use it. Let's discover this. In your terminal, type docker-compose done-v and docker-compose up-d in order to restart Airflow. Hit enter and let's wait until Airflow is up and running. All right, Airflow is running. Go to your web browser, open a new tab and type localhost colon 8080. Hit enter, and now you have to sign in. But this time, the users will be the users as defined in your LDAP directory. So let's say you want to sign in with Mark Lomerty, who is the admin. Well, you have to use the username as defined in the LDAP directory, mlomerty, as shown right there. Type mlomerty, and the password is Mark. Click on sign in, and as you can see, you are able to log into your Airflow user interface. If you go to security and list users, you can find that the first name of your user is Mark, last name Lomerty, username M Lomerty, the email address, if it is active, and the roles are admin and public, as defined in the configuration file of the web server. Now let's see if it works with Bob and John. So click right there and click on logout. Same for Bob, if you go back to the LDAP, the username is bhead, copy it, paste it, and the password is Bob. Sign in, perfect, it works. If you click on your profile, you can find that this time the role is public, as usual, and user, as defined in your mapping. Next, log out again, and this time try with John. So go back to the LDAP, let's try with John Wick, paste it there, and type John for the password. Sign in, and again, it works. If you click on your profile, you can see that the roles are public and user. And basically, because it is a user, well, John doesn't have access to the security panel and other options. Now, there is a problem here. Indeed, as you can see, you have two DAGs, churn underscore DAG and ML underscore DAG. As shown by the tags, this DAG belongs to the marketing team, and ML underscore DAG belongs to the data science team. So the question is, how can you make sure that John can see only the DAGs that belong to the marketing team and Bob only the DAGs that belong to the data science team? Well, that's what you are going to set up right now. So log out here, then log with mlomberty, the admin, the password is Mark, and let's create two new roles, list roles, Copy the role user, click on actions, copy role, okay. Then rename that role with marketing. So click on detail and type marketing like that. Here you want to delete three permissions, can read on DAGs, can edit on DAGs, and actually you can keep can delete on DAGs. But you want to add two more permissions which are can read on DAG churn underscore DAG and can edit on DAG churn underscore DAG. Like that. Click on save. You have this rule ready. 
copy it. Actions, copy, OK. Edit that role. The name is data underscore science. And this time you want to remove chumdag and give the access to only ML DAG. So can read ML or actually ML underscore DAG and can edit ML underscore DAG. Click on save and now you have your two roles ready. Marketing and data science. But your goal is to say that the marketing group from your LDAP directory should map with the marketing role in your for instance, and same for your data science. The data science group in your LDAP directory should map with the data science role in your for instance. How to do that? Go back to your configuration file, and here, instead of having user, put data science, corresponding to the role that you have just created, and same for marketing, like that. Save the file, restart Airflow. So instead of typing Docker Compose done dash V, remove the dash V and hit enter. Let's wait until F is up and running. F is running, go back to your web browser. Let's close the tab, open it again, type localhost colon 8080 and try to log with Bob. So again, the username of Bob is behead. So type behead and Bob for the password, sign in. And as you can see, this time you only see the DAGs of the data science tip. Let's try with John Wick, log out, type G Wick, and the password John, sign in. And this time John sees only the DAGs that belongs to the marketing team. So that's how you can limit the permissions of your role. And that's how you can map the groups that you have in your LDAP directory with the roles that you have in your for instance. Congratulations, at this time you have successfully configured Airflow with LDAP. You have created an LDAP server, you have configured your Airflow instance with your LDAP, and you have mapped your LDAP groups with your Airflow roles. So well done, take care, and see you in the next video.